So today we begin chapter 15 and it is multiple integrals. In this chapter, you will learn about double and triple integrals. Before that, let's see what is a single integral. I mean how you define integral a to b fx dx. Integral a to b fx dx. This kind of integrals you have already done in your 12th standard and hope you recall it. How we define it? Suppose fx is continuous function on cross interval ab. fx is continuous function on closed interval AB. Say this is its plot from x equal to A to x equal to B. This point is AFA, that point is BFB. So we divide this integral AB into n parts, say by choosing points A equal to x1, x2, x3, and so on, xn, and then B equal to xn plus 1, so that there are n subintervals of the integral AB. Somewhere let's say the ith subinterval xi to xi plus 1. Okay, so you have divided the integral AB into n parts by choosing points like this. Now, in each subinterval, choose a point. Say in first subinterval, you choose C1 second subinterval choose C2 and so on. In ith subinterval choose CI. Okay. And in the last subinterval x into x in plus 1 choose C. Anywhere you can choose. After that construct the sum with some summation i varying from 1 to n FCI into delta xi. What is delta xi here? Length of the ith subinterval means it is xi plus 1 minus xi. It is xi plus 1 minus xi. So we have constructed this sum. Do you understand the geometry of this sum? What is fci? FCI is the value of F at which point CI. It is multiplied by length of the interval, means the ith subinterval. So what do you get? A rectangle like this. And also if you recall, you choose this point CI for convenience. Note that side. I should show this side, xi I have shown left side. Okay, this rectangle. So fci is this height. Multiplied with delta xi, this length. So what do you get? Area of this rectangle? I was saying that for convenience, if you recall from your 12th class, you choose CI either XI or XI plus 1. So let's choose CI equal to XI here. It doesn't matter. You will see it doesn't matter. So I'm writing in place of CI XI. Now exactly you are choosing the left edge of the rectangle. 
this rectangle. So this is your FXI. FXI into delta XI gives the area of this rectangle. I have shown for IF, same holds for others. This rectangle, the next rectangle, this one, and then final rectangle X into X in plus one, this one. Okay, you understand it. It goes like this. Now, approximately, what is it? It is area under this curve, which curve y equal to fx. It is approximately because these areas are left on the top of these rectangles. So it is approximately the area under the curve y equal to fx from x equal to a to x equal to b. All right. Now if I take its limit, limit of this sum as n tends to infinity, then this limit, if it just defines this integral, defines the integral of fx over the closed interval ab. And also you have to ensure that as n tends to infinity, length of the ith sub interval goes to zero. Okay, if you choose these sub intervals of equal length, then you know it's nothing but b minus a over n. So as n tells to infinity, this goes to zero. So geometrically, you can understand that width of these rectangles become smaller and smaller as n tells to infinity, and these areas are also covered in the limit, which are left out earlier. So that's how this integral gives area under the curve y equal to fx from x equal to a to x equal to b. That's the geometrical interpretation of this. And this is mathematical definition of this definite integral of fx over the closed interval a b. All these things you already know from your 12th class. I have just done a revision. Okay. Can you guess why such a sign for integral, this sign? It is in fact elongated as. This if you consider this sum, this sum, if you consider as finite sum, then taking n tending to infinity, taking the limit as n tends to infinity means you have sum these terms up to infinity, infinity many terms. So in place of small s, this symbol appears. Okay. All right. What happens if I choose fxi equal to 1 here? Then what is this integral? Means I'm asking you, what is integral a to b dx? If you choose fxi equal to 1, it is nothing but sum of the lengths of these subintervals sum of the lengths of the subintervals, i varying from 1 to n delta xi, limit and tending to infinity. What do you get? Sum of the, all these uh, lengths of subintervals gives you nothing but length of the total interval. That is b minus i. Okay. One more thing you should know that average value of average value of fx over the closed interval a b is given by over closed interval a b is given by what one over b minus a integral a to b fx dx correct Remember that average value of fx is defined as 1 over length of the interval into the integral of fx over the closed interval of b. Alright, 
So in analogy to this, we can define double integral. We can define double integral. Let's see how we define double integral. By the way, how do you solve single integral? We use a theorem, second fundamental theorem of calculus. How do we use that? Integral a to b fx dx. First, to find its antiderivative, suppose its antiderivative is capital Fx. Then, according to second fundamental theorem, the integral is evaluated using this formula f at upper limit minus f at lower limit. This is because of second fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is the way to solve. What is this antiderivative? f prime x is equal to small fx. So uh, these points were supposed to know already. Anyway, I have repeated this for you. Now let's move to the definition of double integral. If you understand the limit definition of single integral, it's very easy to understand the limit definition of double integral. Let's see how we define it. Suppose fx y is continuous, is continuous in some region R in xy plane. You know fxy is defined in xy plane. Say fxy is defined in xy plane in the region R. Say this kind of region. In this region, the function fxy is defined. And say this is the plot of the function. Plot of the function of two variables is a surface, am I right? Yes, you know it. This surface is mounted over this domain of the function is its plot. Let's say this is the plot of the function fxy. Now, in case of one variable function, you divided the domain into sub-intervals. Here, you have a plane region. So, let's divide it into rectangles by choosing lines parallel to x-axis and y-axis. Let's choose lines like this. Choose some lines parallel to y-axis also. Okay, suppose there are n complete rectangles. There are n co complete rectangles and uh, dimensions of the ith rectangle are say delta yi and delta xi. This is the ith rectangle. Now, in this ith rectangle, choose a point say x i y i then construct the sum with some summation f x i y i into delta x i delta y i i goes from 1 to n geometrically what is it can you interpret it What is fxi yi? It is the height of the point on the surface corresponding to xi yi, correct? This height is fxi yi. And what is this? Area of the base of this area of the base, base of what? Let's construct a cuboid with base as this with base as this rectangle, the ith rectangle. Okay. So you understand, you have a, you have a cuboid erected over this ith rectangle. 
and volume of this cuboid is given by this whole expression because fxi ya is the height and this is the base area of base okay so if i sum up all these uh, volumes it is the volume of this cuboid correct if i sum up the volumes of all these cuboids then what do i get volume under this surface approximately the volume under this surface over the region r over the region r am i right there you got area under the curve here you are getting volume under the surface approximately but if you take the limit of this sum as n tends to infinity delta x i going to zero delta y i also going to zero in that case you understand left or volumes below the surface above the cuboids are also covered this limit of exists defines double integral of the function fx y over the region r we denote the area element by dr also you can simply write dx dy okay in in your book this notation is used but it's okay if you use dx dy and it's understood that xy vary in this region r okay so what is this geometrically it is volume it is volume under the surface under the surface fx y or z equal to fx y over the region r over the region r okay remember this geometrical interpretation of double integral now what if i choose this function as 1 what do i get sum of the areas of these rectangles in the region r and in the limit it gives gives if i choose fx y equal to 1 what do i get for this double integral dx dy it gives area of r it gives area of r am i right there you got length of the sub interval because you are summing delta xi here if fx i yi is 1 or function is 1 then this is sum of the areas of these elementary rectangles that are constructed by choosing lines parallel to x axis and y axis in the given region okay so remember this formula it's very important a given region r suppose you are given a region r then you can find its area using this formula double integral dx dy also it it's not only area its volume under the plane j equal to 1 because fx y 1 means you can construct a plane here j equal to 1 so it is also the volume under the plane j equal to 1 over this region r so it, it, the difference is of only units magnitude wise area of r and volume under the plane fx y equal to 1 both are same hope this is clear one more point what is average value how you will define average value of a function of two variables it is 1 over area of r area of the region r into double integral of the function f x y over the region r in one variable you did one over length of the interval into single integral in two variable this is the formula to get to get average value of the function over the given region r is it clear okay now same way you can define 
triple integral. Let's define it. Then we will start doing the problems. Triple integral. So what will you say? Say f x y z is a continuous function in some region d. But now the region d is in space because it is a three variable function. Suppose f x y z is continuous in a region d in space. Then how to define triple integral of the function over the over the region D? Say this is the region D. Now it is in space. So divide this region into cuboids by choosing planes, by choosing planes parallel to x y plane, y z plane, and z x plane. You understand if you slice it by choosing planes parallel to x, y, z, uh, y, z and z explains, then you will, this, uh, this 3D region will be divided into, will be divided into cuboids. Let delta x, i, delta y, delta z, i be the dimensions of the ith cuboid. In that cuboid, choose a point, x, i, y, z, i. Then construct this sum. If limit of this sum as delta x, i going to 0, delta y, i going to 0, delta z, i going to 0. Turns out finite. Then this limit, this limit defines triple integral of f x y z over the region d, or you can simply write d x d y d z. This is the notation. Because f x y z doesn't have geometry, we cannot interpret it geometrically. Though we have a special case where we can interpret the geometry. What is that? If f x y z is one, this this becomes one. Then what do you get? Some of the volumes of, of those cuboids that you created by slicing the three D region into cuboids. So in that case, what do you get? this integral and in place of area of r it becomes volume of t volume of the region d so this is a volume formula that you can use for finding the volume of a 3d region and likewise you can define average value how average value of f x y z over the region d is given by vol uh, volume of d into triple integral of f x y z over the region d. So you can understand that the definitions are analogous. So as such, it doesn't have geometry because f x y z, you know, uh, doesn't carry a plot or graph. We cannot interpret it geometrically. But in the special case, when f x y z is 1, this formula gives you volume of the region d. All right. Now, you will learn how to solve double and triple integrals. Definitions you have understood, geometry you have understood. Now you can learn the procedure for solving double and triple integrals. First we will solve double integrals of various types, then we will move to triple integrals. So you recall that in case of one variable function, the single integral is solved by second fundamental theorem of Kempis. Likewise, for double integrals, there is a theorem called Frobenius theorem. It tells us how to solve a double integral. Suppose f x y is continuous over the region given by the collection of points x y, x varies from a to b, y varies from c to d. You understand it is a rectangular region, always the function is given continuous. 
So according to Fubini's theorem, the double integral of fxy over this region is given by this integral a to b, second integral c to b, fxy, dx dy. These limits, inner limits are for x, remember that, outer limits are for y. How to solve it? Put a bracket on the inner, inner integral. Integrate this function treating y as constant because first you are integrating with respect to x. So treat y as constant. If you treat y as a constant, then it is a single variable function of x and you can integrate it easily. After that, apply the limits of x from a to b. Left over function would be a function of y, a single variable function again that you can integrate with respect to y and apply the limits finally for y from c to b. So this is how you solve a double integral. Okay, you can solve it in other order also, means you can write a to b, c to b, but be careful, now you have to write dy first, then dx. Why? Because now these limits are for y. So in this case, the order of uh, calculation is different. First, you will integrate with respect to x, treating x as constant. And then, the resultant function that would be of uh, the variable x, you will integrate with respect to x. And finally, apply the limits of x from a to b. Okay, so you understand this case. When both x and y limits are constants, this is how you need to solve the double integral. There is one more case in which the region is not rectangular. Say R is the collection of points x, y. x varies from A to B. And y varies from phi x to psi x, some functions of x. Okay, we'll take up examples then we'll understand how you get variable limits. So in this case, according to Fugini's theorem, this double integral over R is sold in this order, integral a to b, phi x to psi x, fxy, these are limits of y, so first write dy, then dx. So it's understood that first you will solve this integral, where the variable is y. After solving this, you will solve the integral with respect to x. Okay, so variable limits are to be applied first while integrating in this kind of situation. Okay, we will take up examples that uh, would clarify you how to solve this. So if the limits are variable for one variable, either for x or for y, then the region is not rectangular. From this result, it is clear that for rectangular region, whatever order you apply the limit, it's fine. Okay, let's do some problems. Then you will understand these results. First example. Integrate fxy equal to 1 plus xy square over the region R where R is given by R is given by the collection of points xy where x varies from 0 to 2 and y varies from 0 to 1. Okay, 
So, how to solve this according to Frobenius theorem? Write the limits of x, y. The, here, the limits are constants for both variables, rectangular region. By the way, which rectangular region? x goes from 0 to 2. These are two straight lines parallel to y axis. And y goes from 0 to 1. Y zero y equal to zero is x axis, you know, and y equal to one is a line parallel to x axis. So the region given by the uh, by the combination of these four lines is this one. So this is your region of integration here. Okay. All right. So x limits are zero to two. Y limits are zero to one. 1 plus xy square, or d is okay because first are x limits, so dx then dy. Let's solve it. How to solve it? Put a bracket on the inner integral for clarity. Then you can put square brackets. Then integrate the function with respect to x treating y as constant. So what do you get? x plus x square y square over 2. Limits of x are from 0 to 2. Okay, solve it further. Upper limit of x is 2. So if you put 2, what do you get? 2 plus 2 square y square over 2. Lower limit is 0. So no need to write, we'll get zero only, dy. Now you can see it's a function of y only. It's a function of y, two plus two y square. You can happily integrate it with respect to y and find your answer. With respect to y, if you integrate, you get two y plus two y to over three. Limits 0 to 1. What do you get in the end? 8 over 3. Check it. You get 8 over 3. Right? You can solve the same integral in different order also. I mean, you can first write limits of x 0 to 1. Okay, this integral I'm talking. You can solve in this order also x 0 to 1, y is 0 to. No, no. These are limits of y 0 to 1, x 0 to 2, 1 plus x y square. But this time be careful. You need to write dy first, then dx, because these are limits of y. Okay, solve it yourself. In the end, you should get the same answer, 8 over 3. Okay, so you all, you can solve the problem in either order. You will get the same result. Now see the next problem. Solve the double integral. Okay, let me write the function directly. Solve the double integral over the region R. xy dx dy xy dx dy where r is given by xy such that such that x plus y less than equal to 1 x is greater than equal to 0 y greater than equal to 0 here xy limits xy lower limits are given here but upper limits are not given clearly. So in such a case, first you need to make an rough sketch of the region of integration. 
Can you make a rough sketch of this region? What is it? It is bounded by three, uh, three inequalities. So what are these three inequalities? X greater than equal to zero. So what is X equal to zero? Y axis. Y equal to zero X axis. And X plus Y equal to one is this line. Mating x axis in which point? 1, 0. Y axis in 0, 1. So, this is the region given by these three inequalities. Am I right? X greater than equal to 0, y greater than equal to 0, like this. And x, one, x plus y, this line is x plus y equal to 1. So, this side region, x plus y less than equal to 1. So you understand, this triangular region is the given region of integration. Now, for a given region, how to decide limits? This is very important. You should listen it carefully. The procedure is, draw a ray or a line through the given region, either parallel to x-axis or parallel to y-axis. Let's draw a line through the region parallel to x-axis. See what is the variation of x. See the variation of x. Clearly, wherever your line is, this line, it enters through the y-axis part. So x is 0 on this line that you understand. But as this line leaves the region, it is living here, entering here and living here. It leaves on this line. What is x on this line? From this equation you can write easily, it is 1 minus y. Okay, so you can say that in this region, if I choose a ray or a line parallel to x-axis, x varies from x equal to 0 to x equal to 1 minus y. If you choose horizontal ray through the region, then y limits can be thought of easily. How? See the bottommost point of the region. All these points are bottommost points. What is y on this point? Zero. And what is the uppermost point? This point. What is y here? One. So you can say, at, bo at bottommost points, y is 0. At the uppermost point, y is 1. So these are y limits. Okay, let's solve this integral using these limits. By Frobenius theorem, you first need to write variable limits x 0 to 1 minus y, y 0 to 1. x y dx dy order is okay because these limits are for x. Outer limits are for y. You can solve this integral yourself. How? First integrate with respect to x. What do you get? y x square over 2. And in this, limits of x are from 0 to 1 minus y. I think I need not to solve it further. You can do it yourself. What do you get after this? Upper limit for x is 1 minus y. So you get y times 1 minus y whole square over 2. Lower limit of x is 0. So you get 0. After this, you need to solve this single integral. I think you can do it yourself. I need not to solve it further. The final answer that you get is 1 over 24. Verify it. Yes, you can verify it as 1 over 24. So, if you have understood this procedure. In this case, I have chosen the line through the region parallel to x-axis. What if I choose the line parallel to y-axis? Where it enters? On the bottom line, this line, 
here y is 0, where it leaves on the line x plus y equal to 1. So what is y here? 1 minus x. So in the second case, y goes from 0 to 1 minus x. And x goes from, for x what will you do? Now see the leftmost points on, in, on the, in the given region and see the rightmost point. These all are leftmost points. What is x on, on all these points? 0. There is one rightmost point. Here x is 1. So x will vary from 0 to 1. So now you understand that if you are choosing the line through the region parallel to x axis, then for y limits you have to see the uh, y value of the bottommost point and uppermost point. In case you are choosing a ray parallel to y axis, then for x limits you need to see the x value of the bottommost point and the x value of the uppermost point. No, sorry. x value of the leftmost point and x value of the rightmost point in case you are choosing a ray parallel to y axis. So, if I choose the line through the region parallel to y axis, then how to solve this integral? You have these limits now. You can solve it by applying these limits. y goes from 0 to 1 minus x, x 0 to 1, x y. But order, order should be dx dy or dy dx it should be d by dx because these are limits for y. Okay, solve it. The order is different. If you solve it, you'll get the same answer. 1 over 24. You can verify it. Okay, so this is a very good problem. This explains you how to decide limits in a given region. In case limits are not mentioned, then this is the procedure to obtain the limits by making a rough sketch of the given region. Okay. Now see the next problem. Solve the double integral. R sin theta dr d theta R sin theta dr d theta where R is the region R is the region inside the cardioid I think you recall that it is a cardioid r equal to 1 plus cos theta. I am talking in polar coordinates. From r theta you should understand it. r is the region inside this cardioid and outside the circle. And outside r equal to 1. Can you make a rough sketch of this given region of integration? What is this cardioid? It looks like this. And what is the circle R equal to 1 where it intercept, intercepts this cardioid? So this is R equal to 1 plus cos theta, the cardioid, and this is R equal to 1. This is the given region of integration inside the cardioid but outside this circle. This is your pole. This is polar system. So thing is that how to decide limits for R theta. You know R goes along the radial direction. So choose a line through the region along the radial direction. See where it enters, where it leaves. It enters through the circle. And on this circle, you know this R is 1. And goes out of this cardioid. 
on the boundary of which r is 1 plus cos theta. So r limits are clear for this whole region. It enters through the circle, goes out of the cardioid. So these are r limits. From this point to this point, this point to this point, if you move, theta varies from, what is theta for this point? Minus pi by 2. And for this point, theta is plus pi by 2. So these are limits of theta. So how to solve this interval now? You know the limits. Limits of R are variable. So apply these limits first. R goes from 1 to 1 plus cos theta. Theta goes from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. R sin theta, dr d theta would be okay because these are the limits of R. First, we will solve the inner integral with respect to R treating theta as constant. I think now you can solve this double integral yourself. Tell me your answer. If not now, verify it later. Its answer is zero. You will verify it yourself. Okay. It is different from zero. Tell me in the next lecture. Okay, so this example explains you how to decide limits in case the region is given in polo system. Okay. Let's see the next example. We need to look at variety of examples so that we can comfortably do the problems from the textbook. Solve the double integral sine pi times x square plus y square dx dy over the region R where R is given by the collection of points x, y satisfying this condition. Do you understand what is this region? It's very simple to think. It is this unit circular region. This whole region is the given region of integration. Okay. So 1 here, x is minus 1, y is minus 1, here y is 1. You understand, this is the given unit circular region over which you need to find this double integral. So how to decide the limits? Because limits of x, y are not explicitly given here. Again, the same procedure. Either choose a ray or a line parallel to x-axis or parallel to y-axis. Let's choose a line parallel to x-axis. Where it enters, where it leaves. What is y here? You see this line, wherever you draw this line, it enters through the left part of the circle, this part. Okay? And when it goes out, it is the right half of the circle, or you can say boundary of the right half of the circle. So what is y here? Can you tell? Minus square root of 1 minus x square. And here, because the equation of the circle is, no, I should not mention y here. When you are taking horizontal ray or a line, then these are x limits. So what is x here? Minus root 1 minus y square. And here x is plus root 1 minus y square. Hope you understand it easily. For y limits, see the y coordinate of the bottommost point and then uppermost point. It's very clear, bottommost point y value is minus 1, uppermost point y value is plus 1. Clear? Limits are known to you now. Limits of x are from minus root 1 minus y square to plus root 1 minus y square. 
limits of y are from minus 1 to 1. Sin pi times x square plus y square dx, dx, we, uh, yes, we can write dx first because these are x limits. Now, limits are known to you. Your job is to integrate this function with respect to x. Can you integrate it? Let me ask you a more simple problem. Can you integrate sin x square with respect to x? It is not sin x whole square, it is sin x square. Try your level best. You will not get the answer. Okay, so don't try that. So what to do in this kind of situation? Even if the limits are known, the integration is not solvable. Then we can use some sort of substitution. You you know you use substitutions in single integral. You put something and then the integrand transforms into a suitable function that you can integrate easily. So here also you need to learn the substitution in double integrals. Let me let, let us solve this problem. Then I will go to the general details. In this integral, let's put x equal to r cos theta, y equal to r sine theta. All right. Now you need to apply the limits of r theta here. Okay. We will see what are those limits. But let's change the integrand into r theta. What do we get? pi r square dx dy here I will tell you how, how you get it dx dy you will get r dr d theta I will tell you the procedure ok first I am uh, solving the problem so dx dy goes to r dr d theta what are limits of r theta means what you have just considered polar system in place of Cartesian system for the same circle. For this circle, can you tell me the limits of r and theta? It's clear that for this unit circle, r goes from 0 to 1. Here r is 0, here r is 1. And theta for the whole circle, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. So r 0 to 1, theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Now you have a solvable integrand. You can solve the integration with respect to r because you can substitute r square and you know it can be solved. Let me write it in suitable form for you. You can write it derivative of minus cos pi r square. minus cos pi r square, yes, d theta, okay, or let me write here dr, dr d theta, is it okay, yes, now because you have written in differential form, exact derivative, so what is the integration, minus cos pi r square, limits of r, r from 0 to 1. You can simplify it further yourself. But uh, when you are writing this, you need to adjust something. What is derivative? Sin pi r square into 2 pi r. So 2 pi you need to divide here. Okay. So that these are balanced. So whatever 2 pi is going on. So apply upper limit, lower limit. Okay. And uh, then you get from here, I think plus 2, this 2 is cancelled. You get plus 2, so 2 is cancelled. You are left with 1 over pi, 0 to 2 pi d theta. So in the end you get 2. This is the answer of this problem. But now I need to explain how does it happen. Okay. This is very important.
I'm telling you the general thing now. Suppose you are solving a double integral fxy dx c1. I'm telling you the procedure of substitution in double integrals. Suppose you uh, find that x equal to some function of uv and y equal to some function of uv are suitable to solve your problem. These transformations are suitable. Then this integral transforms to naturally your region R may go to a new region. Okay, depends on the transformation. F x uv whatever uv uh, functions are here that you assume substitute in the given function it becomes now a function of uv dx dy goes to jacobian du dv now what is this jacobian thing the modulus of the jacobian jacobian is given by partial u or partial x no here it is Partial x or partial u, then partial x or partial v, partial y or partial u into partial y over partial v. This is called Jacobian of x, y with respect to u, v. Jacobian of x, y with respect to u, v. Now we are thinking how this thing happens, how this dx, dy thing goes to modulus of Jacobian du dv. It is explained in the lecture notes, but let me give you some hint. We assume that x is differentiable function of uv, y is also differentiable function of uv. So dx you can write as from the theory of partial differentiation, you have studied it in 14th chapter of partial derivatives. You can write it partial x or partial u into du plus partial x or partial v into dv, correct? Likewise, you can write for dy, del y over del u or partial y or partial u into du plus partial y or partial v into dv. From these two equations, find your du dv, okay, and multiply them. In the end, you will see that it is equal to 1 over modulus of this Jacobian into dx dy. Okay, it's a matter of calculation only. So from this, what is dx dy? Mod of Jacobian into dy, that's what we are using. In this particular case, when x is r cos theta and y is r sin theta, what do you get for Jacobian? Let's solve it. So partial x or partial r means cos theta and partial x or partial theta means minus r sin theta. Okay, in place of uv I am using r theta. Likewise partial y or partial r means sin theta and partial r partial r y or partial theta means r cos theta. Solve it. See what do you get. r cos square theta plus r sin square theta you get r. One more thing you should know why modulus is put because this is area element. Actually this is area element in xy plane. This is area element in uv plane. Okay. So modulus ensures that area element remains positive. So this is the relation between the two, okay? So likewise, you can calculate Jacobian for any given set of transformations. For polar, at least remember, the Jacobian of the transformations is R. So in this case, dx dy goes to R dr d theta. So what is the area formula in polar now? Area formula, you know, in Cartesian is double integral over the region dx dy. In polar, it becomes double integral over the region into r dr d theta. Okay, remember this formula. You can find 
areas and polar coordinates also. You can quickly try one problem. Suppose I give you a circle x square plus y square equal to a square. And I ask you to find its area using double integral. So what will you do? If you apply this formula in Cartesian, then you have to write limits of x, y. You know those are complicated, but in polar it's very simple. Its area is for this circle, r limits are from 0 to a, theta limits are from 0 to 2 pi. And this dx dy is replaced by r dr d theta. You can comfortably solve this double integral and you'll find that final answer is pi a square. If you solve the same problem in Cartesian system, you will see that it's not easy. You have to do a lot of calculations. Is it okay? So, hope you have understood the Jacobian story. In fact, when you have a substitution in single integral also, Jacobian is coming there. Isn't it? If you put something x equal to t, your dx goes to what? Your dx goes to dx over dt into dt. You are using this thing there. This is Jacobian of this transformation. All right. So the Jacobian connects the area elements between xy plane and the new plane of variables, say uv plane. Okay, so this way you can do substitutions in double integrals. Now, let us see one more problem on substitution, a different problem. Solve this double integral, 0 to 1, 0 to 1 minus x, square root of x plus y, y minus 2x, whole square, dy dx. Using the transformations, transformations are given to u equal to x plus y, and v equal to y minus 2x. Use these two transformations and solve this integral. Okay. So good transformations are already given to you. So can you find x, y from here? Because I need Jacobian. What are the values of x, y in terms of u, v? So if you solve these two in terms of u v for x y, what do you get? x equal to u over 3 minus v over 3, verify, and y equal to 2 over 3 plus v over 3. So what is Jacobian of this transformation? Jacobian is partial x over partial u, partial x over partial v, partial y over partial u, partial y over partial v. What is partial x over partial u? 1 over 3, minus 1 over 3, then 2 over 3, 1 over 3. Solving this, what do you get? 1 over 3. So Jacobian you have found. Good. It means this dx dy or dy dx goes to Jacobian du dv. That means 1 over 3 du dv. Now you can write this integral and see what happens, this integral. 
x plus y is replaced by u. So you can write root u, then v square, y minus 2x is v, v square, and Jacobian du, uh, Jacobian du dv means 1 over 3 du dv. This is the integral that we solve, but you don't know the limits of uv. That also you have to find. What is the given region of integration? Then you will judge the transform region. Why are these transformations? What is the given region of integration? In the given region of integration, x goes from 0 to 1 and y goes from 0 to 1 minus x. So what is the region? x0 to 1 means x0 is y axis, 1 means this line parallel to y axis, y equal to 0 means x axis, y equal to 1 minus x means this line. Okay, which means at this point, which is 1, 0, this is 0, 1. This is y equal to 1 minus x. This is a given region of integration. Okay, strangular region. But now you have to find the transformed region in the UV plane. How to find it? See what are the boundaries of this region. First look at x equal to 0. If x equal to 0, what do you get from this transformation? x equal to 0 implies u equal to v. We will see what is u equal to v in the uv plane, right? x equal to 0 corresponds to the line u equal to v in the uv plane. Then see y equal to 0. y equal to 0 from, you can see from here, y equal to 0 means, again you are getting a line, which line? u, 2u plus v equal to 0 or you can say 2u equal to minus v or u equal to minus v by 2. u equal to minus v by 2 or you can say y, v equal to minus 2u. Whatever way you write it's fine. One more, y equal to 1 minus x. Can you use these two equations? So you can simply say x plus y is 1. x plus y is 1. This thing is 1 means u equal to 1. So you can say this goes to u equal to 1. y equal to 0 goes to 2 u equal to minus v. And x equal to 0 goes to u equal to v. Show these three in the u plane now. See what kind of reason you have. What kind of reason? V equal to U, you understand a line at 45 degree in the UV plane. This is V equal to U. Just like Y equal to X. V equal to minus 2U, again a line through the region. With negative slope. And U equal to 1 is a line parallel to V axis. So this is your region of integration in the UV plane. This is the transform region, you can say. Now, region is clear to you. V equal to minus 2U, U equal to 1 here, V equal to U. To find the limits of UV for solving this double integral, you need to choose a line through this region, either parallel to u axis or parallel to v axis. Now, here uh, you have an interesting point. If you choose a line parallel to u axis, there is a problem. Because for this region, the line enters through this line. For the uh, bottom region, the line enters through this line. You have to break this double integral into two parts. But if I choose the line through the region parallel to v axis, 
that such a problem is not there. It enters through only one line, which line be equal to minus 2 and goes out of one line which is equal to u. So those, these limits are fine, okay? Only one double integral you need to solve in this case. So v goes from minus 2 u to v equal to u. Okay. And uh, for u limits, you need to see the u value for the leftmost point. Here, this is the point which is leftmost in the region. So here u equal to 0 and rightmost, all these points are rightmost. Here u equal to 1. The so u goes from 0 to 1. After that, you understand what to do, okay? But order you need to write carefully now because these first you are applying, first you are, uh, this is the region R prime, you can say this is R. So this is over R, but this, this double integral is over the region R prime. Once you are mentioning the limits, you should write the order properly. You, first you should write dv, then dv. This double integral is simple once you have the limits. You can see here. First integrate with respect to v, treating u as constant, then integrate with respect to u. This calculation you can do yourself. And the answer for this calculation should be 2 over 9. Verify it. So it's a very good problem. And uh, this problem explains you that how to find transform region and how to find limits in the transform region. And this also gives you a new, new point that depending on the region, you should be smart enough to choose your line parallel to, parallel to horizontal axis or vertical axis. In this case, if you choose a line parallel to U axis, then you can see there is a problem. Up to this part of the region, it enters through this line, or the above part, it enters through this line. So you need to break this integral into two, two, two parts. So that will, uh, that will announce your calculation part, okay? So be careful about it. Okay. Now one more problem before ending the lecture. That will also tell you something new in double integrals. So the double integral e power minus y over y dy dx. y limits are given x to infinity, x limits are given from 0 to infinity. Now, if I ask you to solve it directly, first you will integrate with respect to y. But the problem is, you cannot solve this integral with respect to y, you can try it. It means, this given integral is not solvable in the given order. So what can you do? You need to change the order. Change the order. For changing the order, you need to make a rough sketch of the given region. What is given region? Y goes from X to infinity. X goes from 0 to infinity. Can you make a rough sketch and see the given region? Y goes from X to infinity. Y equal to X is this line y equal to infinity at infinite distance, y equal to infinity. x 0 to infinity, x 0 means y axis, x infinity means a line at infinite distance from y axis. So, common region is this, it is, it is open this side, no end, okay? This dotted region is the given region. Now, for the given order, because y limits are variable, 
It means in the given order, the line is chosen parallel to y. So as you can understand, the line enters a, the line, this vertical line enters through the region, through the line y equal to x and goes up to infinity. Leftmost points x value 0, rightmost point x is infinity. So this is the given order. This is the line through the region or way right through the region of the given order. You want to change the order. For changing, choose your line parallel to x-axis. See where it enters. At x equal to 0 always, on all these points, goes out at x equal to y. x equal to y. Y value for the bottommost point 0 for uppermost point y infinity. You understand that. So after changing the order, what do you get? No limits. X goes from 0 to y and y goes from 0 to infinity. Okay, apply these limits. X 0 to y and y from 0 to infinity. Now you can write the order dx dy. Now there is no problem because this integration with respect to x, so you can treat this whole thing as constant. So what is the integration? You get e power minus or y is constant. Integration is x times this thing. Limits of x are from 0 to y. Okay. Upper limit gives you e power minus y. Lower limit gives 0. So by changing the order, you have got rid of this y in the denominator. Now it's a simple interval. It's e power minus y over minus 1. Limits of y are from 0 to infinity. And you get 1. Upper limit gives you 0. Lower limit gives you plus 1. Clear? So, sometimes changing the order becomes essential. So, you should know how to change the order in a double integral. Okay, so I have covered different types of problems in double integrals. Now, I think you will be comfortable in doing problems from double integrals. In the next lecture, I will, uh, I will discuss problems related to triple integrals. Okay. So thank you. We will meet in the next lecture.